All right, here we go. First boot, brand new image. We're running the Wolf Nose 64 gigabyte image. It has a light gun um, collection on it. That's why I want to use it. The first thing I'm doing is just doing a regular controller. You can do a PlayStation 3 controller, uh, an 8-bit Doe controller. I'm just using an Xbox 360 controller. That gets us on here. Now, you do need the Mayflash Dolphin Bar. It has four modes on it, so you want to go to mode two. There's one, two, three, four. Make sure it's on two. Uh, if you have a Wii remote, make sure you have batteries in it. If it's your first time syncing, take the Wii remote out in the back of the remote. There's a sync button. Click that and click the sync button on here and sync these up. I've already synced it up, so I should just be able to click this here. And you see there, my two lights are on in mode two. Now really briefly, mode two is basically mouse mode. So this is now a mouse. So think about a mouse on your computer. And when you move it around, you are now using the light gun like a mouse on the screen. And um, when you click your trigger, you're basically like clicking a mouse. Fire right there. I want to click on that. But we have this. So that's basically all we're doing. And it's not that complicated. Um, now, you can skip this step if you don't mind using a controller and the Wii remote because you could just go ahead and insert tokens and start the game with your controller and then move on to your gun to shoot. If you want to go ahead and configure the controller as well so that, for example, you can um, you know, use it in other systems as well as use it in emulation station here, go ahead and, con and configure. I'm just going to go up, down, left, right on the D-pad and then start and select. You can use like the plus and the minus. Um, plus is my select, I want to know that. And then A and B, I'll just do like A and a B. That's all you really need. I'm going to use my Xbox 360 controller to go lower. If you don't have the second controller, you can just hold down a, whatever you bound as A to keep moving down this menu. Remember, I want to go ahead and um, I want to make my whatever I did as select also my hotkey enable so I can exit out of games easily. All right, now I'm done there. So now I could technically, as you see here, I'm now scrolling this with my Wii remote. Okay, so let's go up to light gun. And remember we bound this. See, we can actually get into the games 100% with the Wii remote now. Now, oh, the other thing that I just forgot to do is you might actually want to go ahead and um, configure your right trigger onto the Wii remote somewhere, maybe as A, because you're going to see here that we have to do it with the Xbox controller the first time to get into the controls for this particular emulator. The other thing we need to do before all this is actually go into RetroArch and just turn this on. Sometimes this is already on, but on this image it's not on. It's not a big deal at all. So you want to go over to Options and then Enable in-game mouse. Turn this on. Now we're not done because um, emulation or retro arc does not automatically save. So go ahead and go to configuration file, save current configuration file. So that's going to save what we just did. If you don't save and you exit, it might not save your controls. Now I didn't need to close the content there. <laughs> I could have easily just resumed. You don't have to do that. But um, here we go. We now have the in-game mouse on. And then the last thing we need to do is once we're in the game here, we're going to right click. We're going to go ahead and do input in general. So go ahead and scroll to player one input controls. Go ahead and set up your player one button, player two button. But before, sometimes you have to do the light gun. So go scroll all the way down or you can press up and then get down to this light gun X axis. And that what I'm doing right now is move your light gun from left to right for X axis. And then for Y analog, you wanna go ahead and do it up and down. These are the only two buttons you have to you have to get. But as you see, it's not registering it. And see, I got it off. I did mouse X there. And now it's doing mouse X and Y. Honestly, if I just, sometimes slower is better. Um, you can see that I have to scroll up and then back down because sometimes it does not overwrite those controls. I know this is a pain, but basically you have to get it to think that only up and down is the light gun for your Y analog. There you go, I got it. So now we're done setting up the X and the Y axis. 
And then here's where you want to do player one and player two, or button one and button two. Button one will be your main trigger. Button two it tends to be your special button in whatever game you're playing. And then lastly on this list, scroll all the way down, not all the way down, but down quite a bit, and then do your player one start and player one select. And there's actually one more for your coin and your start that we'll do. And then you want to go over here to other controls and just make sure you have the start and your coin one bound as well. And we already have our coin as keypad five. So this is working already. All right, now we should get some. There we go. We're now in. We're doing this all with our Wii Remote. Let's go over to Area 51. Let's, uh, let's start from the beginning. Old school here. I need some help. Reinforcements. And in this game, you actually can um, reload. Let's see. Oh, no, this one you have to reload up to the top of the bar as well. Get better. Oh, you can go to the lower left corner too. There's some of these games where you, um, the reloading is kind of more difficult. Are the aliens also shooting the helicopter? So you might want to bind your, your button too because as you see it throws grenades in this button or in this game and if you want you can um, you can absolutely buy remember you can bind that d-pad no problem I remember this because it's this about as far as I used to get in the arcade game Oh, this guy's multiple. Hit it! Level clear. Horrible accuracy. You can go ahead and go back in with your right controller here, and you can go to your analog controls. And this is where you can mess with the sensitivity. I actually like it less sensitive. Actually, this is wrong right here. I want a 70-70. But again, it's going to depend. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Oh, I forgot to continue in time. But some people find that it's oversensitive to start. And so, mess with those sensitivity settings for the X and the Y axis. You might have better... <laughs> That's awesome. You might have better luck doing different things. So, remember we can just add coins, hit start anytime. And now we're back in again. Let's try maximum force this time. Mission 2. Again, you want to get a little farther back. We'll actually make it run a little better. And yes, you can still reload by... It's fairly accurate. The biggest beef I have with it is how it kind of moves. It doesn't really stay in one place. The other thing that's not great about these is... Oh, I almost shot her. The other thing that's not great that I don't necessarily like is that if you like you're over here and then you come over to the screen, it's hard to find your place again. But I feel like a lot of games were like that in the arcade too. Get the shotgun. Let's see if my controls went over. Yeah, see I can still coin and I can still start all on the controller. 
I'm gonna step a little further back. Yeah, see the sensitivity is way lighter. It's actually, I like this a lot. Now when it goes off the screen, that's why it's lagging. Oh wow. Oh, scared him. Damn. Oh. Got him. I think I shoot him in the man parts. So if you want to reload in this game, you got to do it in the upper left and upper right hand corners. The lower left and lower right does not work. All right, let's try a different game. That game played really well. I highly recommend Lethal Enforcers. Hated games. So here's one, Rail Chase. This looks like it's similar to Jurassic Park. Broken, put in tokens, start it out. Hey, 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 I'm hitting their masks. Does it matter? Whoa! Whoa! And games like this where you have to hold down the gun, or you can hold down the gun, uh, it's quite easy, and the experience is pretty good. Hey, hey, hey! Alright, here we go, we're gonna shoot some pigeons. We're gonna shoot some clay pigeons. These are just discs. Shoot here to play the skeet shoot or the trap. Let's try skeet first. You wanna try skeet or strap? Trap. Trap? All right, are we ready? Yeah. That was bad. Got him. Got it while holding a baby. What? Oh, 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 we got trench coat. Oh, we almost shot the lady. Oh. Got him. If it floats in the middle now, oh, oh, I saved him. Oh, you had to go fast. Whoops. Let me try that one again. I want to play it again. Pirate eggs. Kill the pirate eggs. That's awesome, that animation. Crack.
啊。Pass. Oh, I needed five more. Okay, let's do it. That one was better, right? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so there you have it, playing light gun games. A lot of these light, game, light, light gun games are on MAME 2016 emulator. So um, you can always change the emulator within RetroPie. You just click on the game, you hold down A, press A, there you go. And you can see now there's a bunch of different emulators. Depending on the version of MAME, the control setup, and the way it detects whether it's a mouse or a light gun, you can have some you know, play area there, and then you can mess with the different sensitivities. And then also what I'm finding is each game itself has its own sensitivities as well. So, um, But once you set them up and you get it to where you like, it should stay that way for the next time you boot up that same game. Um, so... It takes a little bit of time finessing, you know, and especially depending on what you're doing. I'm using a Wii remote. I know you could get like an aim track light gun. There's some other light gun options out there. Um, you could use a mouse. You could use a trackball potentially. Um, and so this should get you all started though, especially for somebody who just wants to get in there, start playing some of these old arcade games, especially now in quarantine. Some people you can't, you know, you can't go out to the arcade. So it gives you that option. But um, if you follow this, it should get you started. And this is not just for this image, it's for a lot of different images. And I've been making a few different uh, videos on this because it's not as simple as it seems. And depending on the emulator you use, depending on some other factors, it's a little different every time. But if you've been following my videos, I try to explain it very clearly. If you do have any questions, feel free to comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.